In Shadowrun 5th Edition, knowledge is power, and the race to get information can mean the difference between a payday and a dirt nap. That's where an often overlooked asset comes in, contacts. In order to get a leg up on all those other Shadowrunners out there who are trying to get to that pay data first, you're going to need to do some work. Leg work, that is. Imagine facing down that Red Samurai Strike Force without your trusty Ares Alpha, or rappelling down the side of the Seattle Space Needle without any climbing gear. That would be like doing any Shadowrun without first doing your homework. I, I mean, leg work. To do that legwork, you're going to need to utilize your contacts. But be smart, chummers. Don't call your fishmonger contact, even if you might be fishing for information about corporate security and blueprints. <laughs> well, because, you know, he knows about fish. Instead, call your corporate contact or the security guy you know. Always use the right contact for the right information. Now, once you've picked which of your contacts to call, your game master will decide whether or not they're available to take your call. Now, if they'd like, GMs can randomly determine availability by rolling 2d6 with a threshold of the contact's connection rating. Success means that they'll answer the call. Failure means that your contact is indisposed. If you do manage to get in touch with the contact, it's time to see if they have any relevant data. You roll the appropriate knowledge skill and linked attribute. The threshold needed for your contact to have useful information is decided by your GM. The contact's social limit applies to this test. However, just because they know the thing doesn't mean that they will tell you the thing. Minor information is likely to be readily handed out without much fuss, but valuable data or information which may put the contact at risk might take some convincing or cost a little extra. To do that convincing, you're going to want to roll your negotiation plus charisma. Your loyalty rating will act as a positive dice pool modifier on this test, and your street cred increases your social limit. Now, if you want to sweeten the deal, you can always throw money at it. This is one of the rare cases where you can literally buy extra dice for the test. Those don't come cheap, though. Subtract the contact's loyalty rating from 7 and multiply that by 100 nuyen. That's how much each extra die is going to cost you. Now, this is all assuming your contact already has the information you're looking for. But what if they don't? Never fear! They can just do the legwork for you! The contact will make an extended connection plus charisma test. The interval for this test is one hour, and the GM will determine the threshold by using the extended test threshold table on page 48 of the core rulebook. Plus or minus any appropriate modifiers, of course. Note that the contact may substitute any appropriate knowledge skills for their charisma in this test. Success on these tests means you've got some useful information to help you on your run. Failure means, well, you're right back where you started. This episode was co-written by one of my patrons on Patreon. She also got to come on a live stream and help me draw each of the slides you just watched. If you want the chance to be able to help draw, write, or just vote on upcoming GM screen episodes, then consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Go over to patreon.com slash complex action and check it out. Everything here is made possible by the generous support of those patrons. And thanks for watching.